Hey guys, if you're looking to start your own self-hosted e-commerce solution to sell your products or services, PrestaShop might be the solution you've been looking for. The reason I air quoted self-hosted is because in this video, we're going to set up PrestaShop using Docker, but on Linode. If you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, be sure to head down to the description to find a link where you can get $100 in free credit to check out Linode for 60 days. Also, thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Because there are so many different uh, types of shops and so many different ways that you can run a shop, I'm not gonna tell you how to run your shop. That, that, that's gonna be up to you. Uh, if you're not sure how you want to run your shop though, there are tons of tutorials out there uh, that will cover all kinds of different ways to set up different types of shops so that you can figure out the best method to set up your shop for your needs. Of course, to get started, the first thing we'll wanna do is make sure that we are in fact logged into our Linode account. Once we're logged in, we'll be taken to our dashboard and from there we can click the Create Linode button. It may be in the center of the page if this is a brand new dashboard of yours or if you've already got other Linodes, it should be in the top right-hand corner of the page. To help keep things simple from the start, we can actually go over to the Marketplace tab across the top of the page and then do a search for Docker. Then we're going to click the Docker icon in the search results and then scroll down just a little bit. In this first section, this is kind of where we can, if we want a bit of extra security, enable a sudo user and disable SSH for our root account. And this is definitely a good idea uh, when you're setting up something to go into production, uh, meaning something that the general public will access. For the sake of this tutorial though, we're just gonna kind of skip over that as it's not really necessary for this demonstration. If we scroll down just a bit more, we'll be asked to select an image and this will be our operating system base image and I'm going to select Debian 11 here. Next, we're going to select a region and this is basically where we want our Linode to be hosted. And I usually like to choose something close to me just so I can help reduce latency whenever possible. But uh, let's say you're setting up a, a, an e-commerce solution in a different region, maybe a different country from where you currently reside because you're trying to target a specific uh, area, demographic, whatever the case is, you may want to select a Linode location closer to them than to you so that their latency is a little bit lower. Next, we're going to select our Linode configuration for CPU, RAM, and that sort of thing. To make sure that I've got enough resources for this setup, I'm going to select the dedicated four gig plan. Next, you'll give your Linode a label just so you can tell what that Linode's purpose is. In this case, I'm going to use PrestaShop as my label. Uh, tags here are optional, but they're there if you want them. Now you'll want to enter a root password and scroll down to the add-ons section. And I definitely recommend backups and a private IP just for an extra little bit of peace of mind. At this point, we can click the Create Linode button and wait for a few moments for the system to spin up. While this is going on, we can uh, use this time to our advantage and head over to our domain registrar and make sure that we have the name servers for the domain that we wanna use pointed to Linode's name server setup, which is ns1 through ns5.linode.com. Now, once you change your name server settings at your registrar to point to Linode, or really anywhere, generally speaking, it may take a day or so for the DNS changes to propagate and make your domain available uh, on those new uh, name server records. However, after your DNS has propagated, we can head back over to our Linode dashboard and click on domains. Now that we're on the domains page, we can click on create domain and enter the domain name that you wanna use as well as your email address in the appropriate text boxes. Next, you're going to click where it says, do not insert default records for me and change it to insert default records from one of my Linodes and then select the press to shop Linode that we just created and then click create domain. Now at this point, we can head back to our Linode dashboard and open up our Presta Shop Linode. At the top right side of that page, you'll see something that resembles like SSH root at your Linode's IP address. Go ahead and copy that and then open your preferred terminal emulator. You can now paste in the SSH root at your IP into your terminal window and you'll be asked if you're sure that you want to connect. Type yes and hit enter. Now, uh, if you're not sure, the reason it's asking if you're sure you want to connect is because it's just a little safety feature built in to make sure that you understand that maybe uh, maybe you maybe you mistyped something, uh, just making sure that you, you are fully aware of the server that you're trying to connect to via IP. Uh, it's just a little extra thing to make sure that you double check that everything is correct before you try to connect. After you type in yes and hit enter, you can then enter your password and then we're ready to get started. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do, uh, at least that I like to do in these situations is install something called 
Portainer. And basically Portainer is just a nice graphical user interface that we can use rather than doing everything in command line. However, if you wanted to deploy all of this in command line, you absolutely could. So to install Portainer, you can just copy and paste the CLI install script from Portainer's website and give the system a moment to bring up our Portainer instance. Once Portainer is up and running, we can head over to our browser and type in our Linode's IP and tack on port 9443 in the URL bar. You may get an error message saying that the browser doesn't recommend that you continue to this site um, because there is a self-signed certificate. Um, and of course, for security reasons, your browser will warn you of that. Uh, you can just accept the risk, not that there really is one, and then you should be brought to a page asking you to create an account for your Portainer instance. By default, Portainer has filled in the username admin. For security reasons, I highly recommend that you change that to almost anything else, just not admin. Uh, go ahead and enter your, uh, your, your password a couple of times and then click the button below to continue. Now that we're logged into Portainer, the first thing we'll wanna do is actually head over to the environments link on the left side of the page and click local. Uh, on that page, we're going to enter our Linode's IP address and click the save button. And this is just to set the IP variable in Portainer to prevent us from having any issues later on. Once we've got this complete, we can then click on the home link at the top of the page and then click pretty much anywhere on the right side of the page to take us to where we need to get next. The next thing we wanna do is actually create a stack, which is the Portainer equivalent to a Docker Compose. So go ahead and click on stacks in the left menu. And then on that next page, we're going to click add a stack at the top right. And that will take us to our next page. What we wanna do next is actually give our stack, again, this is this is synonymous with Docker Compose. We wanna give that stack a name. Uh, make sure to use all lowercase letters, uh, anything other than that, and Portainer will have a bit of a fit. Now we can copy and paste the Docker Compose for PrestaShop that's linked in the video description into the text box in the middle of the page. And this Docker Compose will actually deploy three different containers. The first container will be the PrestaShop app container. Uh, we've also got a MySQL database container to store the information for the PrestaShop container. The last container that will be deployed via this Docker Compose or stack is a container called PHP My Admin. And we're going to need this container only for a short period of time while we're getting PrestaShop configured. There's a couple of database changes that we need to make using PHP My Admin. Now, taking a look at the PrestaShop part of the Docker Compose, there are a few entries that we'll want to change. The first will be the db underscore password entry. Uh, make sure that you change this to something more secure than what I'm showing in this video for the sake of demonstration. The dev mode entry is useful while you're getting things set up or are, you're actually maybe developing extensions for press to shop or that sort of thing. If you don't plan on doing anything like this, you can leave this set to zero. The demo mode is kind of the same. Uh, this will just set up a demonstration shop. So if you wanna just check it out and see how it works, see how, how the kind of the back in works, that sort of thing. You can set this to one, take a look around, and then maybe do a reinstall and have a demo mode set to zero. The PS install auto is just there to help deploy this setup a bit faster. The PS folder admin is where you'll access your admin panel for PrestaShop, basically, you know, your domain slash whatever you put here. Now, by default, it's set to admin, and if you leave this as admin during the installation, the, the system will force you to change it later on uh, before you can actually even log into the admin panel. There are uh, several other environment variables available to the setup, and you can find more information about them over on the resources page listed in the video description. Now, when we take a look at the database container section of this Docker Compose slash stack, there are really only a couple of things that you need to change. The first one is the root password. Uh, please make this something more complex than what I'm showing Going here again this video is just for demonstrative purposes the other thing that you need to change is the mysql password uh, you'll want to make sure that it matches the db underscore password entry from the presta shop section above in this docker compose the last container in this docker compose is the php my admin container and it's really only here so as i mentioned before we can change a couple of the database settings for ssl purposes later on after we've brought up the containers once you're happy with your docker compose settings uh, whether whether it's for demo mode or your domain name or whatever the case is, uh, you can scroll down and click the uh, deploy button below the containers. Now, the system will take a few minutes to bring everything up as it's gotta download some stuff and to uncompress some stuff and deploy some stuff. So give it a few minutes, but after that, those containers have been brought up, we'll next want to deploy our reverse proxy container, which is Nginx Proxy Manager, that will handle routing of our traffic as well as handling our SSL certificates. Now, before we actually 
do that, before we bring up that Nginx proxy manager container, uh, what we want to do first is head over to the networks section in Portainer to get the name of the network that our previous containers created. When you find it, make sure to note the name of it as we're going to need that here in just a moment. So what we want to do at this point is deploy Nginx proxy manager. And you again can find that Docker Compose listed in the description down below. So what we're going to do is copy the Nginx proxy manager Docker Compose and create a new stack in Portainer, just like we did before. We'll give it a name and then we'll paste in the contents of that Docker Compose. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you change uh, both of the network entries that are listed in this Docker Compose to the name of the network that we took a look at just a moment ago. Once you've got everything configured the way you need it for your setup, you can scroll down and click on the deploy button and give the system a few more minutes to bring up Nginx Proxy Manager. As you may have noticed earlier, the page will reload once all of the assets have been downloaded and the containers have been deployed. Uh, at this point, uh, you'll want to be taken back to the stacks page. And this is where you'll want to click the stack that we just created for Nginx Proxy Manager. On this page, you'll see things like the name of the container. There's be some icons for looking at resources and and uh, being able to access it at a console. Uh, there's also some stuff like IP addresses and ports. Specifically, what we want to do here is click on the 81 listed under the ports, and you'll be taken to the login page for Nginx Proxy Manager. Now, to get logged in to Nginx Proxy Manager, you'll want to enter the default credentials, which are admin at example.com, and the password is changeme. When you log in for the first time, you will be required to change both your, your name, your email address, and your password to something different. So go ahead and do that, and then we can move on to the next steps. So the first thing we wanna do once we're in here is actually create an SSL for our domain name. So go ahead and click on the SSL certificates at the top of the page, and then click Add SSL Certificate near the top right of the page, and then click Let's Encrypt. A window will pop up, and you can enter your domain name, and then click that you agree to the terms of service, and then click Save. Now, after a, a moment or two, the page will reload, and you should hopefully see a new SSL entry on that page with your domain name listed. The next thing we want to do is actually create a host. So basically, uh, we're going to actually configure our domain name in Nginx Proxy Manager now and we're going to click the Hosts tab across the top of the page and then click Add a New Proxy Host. You're going to click the Add Proxy Host and again, enter your domain name in the appropriate box. The scheme can stay HTTP. Now, the forward hostname and IP can be found back over on our Portainer page. Uh, you can find the PrestaShop line in your list of containers, and then you'll find an IP address listed on the line between the container name and the ports assigned to it. It'll probably start with 172, just to kind of give you something to be looking for. Now, you can copy the IP address from the Portainer page and then paste it into the hostname slash IP box over on Nginx Proxy Manager. Now, look, I know you can also use the container name of the container that you want to access, but I've always had much better luck using the IP address. That's completely up to you and you can kind of play around with that to figure out which method you prefer. The port that we're going to enter next to that IP address is going to be 80. And then you'll want to be sure to check the three options below that and then head over to the SSL tab in the pop-up window. We're going to select the SSL that we just generated in that previous step and select the four options below that to make sure that the system forces us to actually use the SSL and there's really no way to bypass it. You can now click the save button and in just a moment the page should reload and you should now see your domain name listed as a new entry on the page. So now that all of our containers are up and running and our SSL and our domain are configured, what we need to do is actually edit a couple of entries in the database. So to do that, what we're going to do is go back to our list of Docker containers in Portainer and then click the ports on that PHP MyAdmin line. And this should bring up a PHP MyAdmin login page. You should see three lines that you need to provide data for. You're going to enter root for the username and then enter the root password from your Docker Compose file. Once you're logged in, you'll be looking for an entry on the left column called PrestaShop. You're gonna click that, and then that's going to open up uh, all of the tables within that database. And again, in that left column, you're going to scroll down almost to the bottom and look for an entry called PS underscore configuration and click it. When you do that, the right side of the page this time is going to change. Uh, what you're gonna to wanna to do though, there's just going to be a few entries, like 25 entries on that page. At the bottom though, there will be an option where you can select 25 and change that to 500. Um, that's just the biggest entry and it's just the easiest way I have found uh, to, to be able to edit this, this setup quickly. Now, what you wanna do is scroll down on that right side of the page until you find each of these two entries. We're looking for PS underscore SSL underscore enabled and PS underscore SSL underscore enabled underscore everywhere. Both of those are going to have a zero next to them. 
If you double click the zero, it will take you into edit mode where you, then you can change that zero to a one and then on your keyboard hit enter and that will save the new changed entry. Be sure to do that for both of the SSL entries that I mentioned a moment ago. And now you should be able to go to your uh, PrestaShop login area by going to yourdomain.com slash admin or whatever you changed admin to in the Docker Compose when you deployed it. If you changed the admin to something else in your Docker Compose, you should just be able to log in with your username and password that you configured in that Docker Compose. However, uh, if you just left that set to admin, uh, it's going to tell you that you need to change the, uh, the admin folder in your Docker image or your Docker container to whatever's listed on the screen. Uh, we can do that pretty easily by going back over to Portainer and uh, editing from there. What we need to do first though is copy whatever it says on that page. It'll be admin and then a bunch, like a long string of characters. So copy admin and that long string of characters to your clipboard and then go over to uh, Portainer and go to the PrestaShop entry in Portainer and click the little console icon. Uh, this is just kind of getting us prepped to go in to do a little bit of command line stuff here. Uh, what we're gonna do is click on continue and then you'll be brought to kind of a, a terminal looking window. Uh, what you're gonna do uh, once you're logged in, once you see that, that terminal window, it'll be like var www html. Uh, what you're gonna do is type in mv space admin and then space um, admin and that string of characters, right? So it's, it, I'll just put it up on the screen what it should look like here. Uh, once you've typed that in or copied and pasted or whatever the case is, go ahead and hit enter. And then it should basically move that admin or rename that admin to whatever the new admin folder name you're looking for is. Now you should be able to go back to your portainer screen where you were trying to log in and it was telling you, hey, you need to change this. Um, because you've now changed that, you can click that link um, and it should then take you to the login page for uh, your PrestaShop instance where you can now log in with the admin credentials that you've defined in your Docker Compose. Once you're logged in, you'll probably want to change a few things like your locale, your currency, and your shipping methods. From my experience going through this, those are kind of the three big ones uh, that made the most sense to change almost immediately. Now, beyond that, if you want to add additional payment methods, additional shipping methods, uh, um, any kind of additional functionality, uh, you can head over to addons.prestashop.com, register for a free account, and then find the different types of payment modules, shipping modules, and whatever other kind of modules you might need to build your online shop the way you want to build it. Now, with that said, I want to kind of sidebar here for a second. Uh, while this is an open source project, um, and there are tons and tons and tons of free add-ons for PrestaShop, not all of the add-ons are. Some of those add-ons are going to be commercial and will require a fee. Um, that is that is very standard. I you know I did a lot of web development for years and years and years in several different content management systems, and this is a very standard practice of, of some developers charging for their extensions while others don't. Uh, that's just kind of the nature of the beast when you're dealing with situations like this. So with that little sidebar out of the way, uh, one other thing that I wanna mention before we wrap this up is that because there are so many different uh, types of shops and so many different ways that you can run a shop, I don't necessarily wanna get into, here's how to set up your shop because, well, a couple of things. One, I might be doing it wrong or Two, I might say, here's how I would do it. And then a million people will say, well, that's not how I would do it. And so just to kind of avoid that, um, I'm not gonna tell you how to run your shop. That, that, that's gonna be up to you. Uh, if you're not sure how you want to run your shop though, there are tons of tutorials out there uh, that will cover all kinds of different ways to set up different types of shops so that you can figure out the best method to set up your shop for your needs. So I would love to know what your thoughts are on Presta Shop and if this is something that you would use for your business or your hobby or whatever the case is, let me know in the comment section down below uh, what your thoughts are on Presta Shop. Uh, but I think with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I do wanna thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me today and I'll talk to you in the next video.